Are you okay, buddy? Come on, let's go. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Shit. Great to see you. Hey, my babies are back. <laughs> Great to see you. So excited. Shit, this is this is where they started from. Right. You right. are right here in the mountains. This was the place where this, they started. This was the place they this started. This is awesome. Wow. <laughs> Around the world and back, huh? And they look as beautiful as the first day, don't they? Ah, they're amazing. Should we get into the car? Yeah, no, let's drive? get into the car. Just let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe how much time we spend in this in this car. I use these cars. I I love driving them. I just I'm just an honest ambassador no. because I trust the car, and it's always take brought me back home. We took the G-classes and went through Namibia, yeah, yeah. then across the pole, and then we did the G-classes through uh, New Zealand, and then we sailed, uh, sailed up to Australia, and then the G-classes through Australia, yeah. then sailed up to Singapore, and then G-classes through Asia, and yeah. then over the North Pole, and now they're back, you know, it's <laughs> like... They really did the whole trip around yeah. the world together. Yeah, they did the whole trip. The idea of, of the pole-to-pole -pole expedition was like, I want to receive it was possible to do a circumnavigation of the world, but crossing two poles that's never been done. When did you start with the whole thing? 2016. 2016 we started uh, from from yeah. From and here. Then we drove down with the G classes to Monaco where the boat was. Okay. And yeah. then we we left the G classes there while they were sent to Africa. We sailed to Africa. You sailed to Africa. And then we met the G classes in Namibia, and then we I did that expedition on the skeleton coast of Namibia. The skeleton coast? Yeah, that's the most uninhabited place uh, in, in the, the world. In the world? Yeah. You've got the lions coming over, you've got yeah, the yeah. elephants and the giraffe. No sign of buildings or anything, just the most amazing sand dunes. and Awesome. And that harsh, harshness of Africa with that beauty. The sun and the dunes and the ocean. And on high tide, the, like, the ocean comes right against the dunes and then um, that that makes it so dangerous because you can drive on the beaches and then all of a sudden with the tide just rises and rises and rises and then the beach disappears and you have to be able to have an amazing four-wheel drive to go up the dunes like drive like this <laughs> Otherwise, your car will be taken away by, by, the, waves? by the waves and the ocean. The, the other cars can't go there. You need four-wheel drives to get to drive on the beach. Okay. You know, and that's what made it so, so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once we, we knew that now the ice was breaking up, we left. To, to sail from South Africa to Antarctica. And that put me in a little bit of a problem because that meant that I would be trying to cross Antarctica not in the summer season, yeah. but towards the end of the summer when winter starts coming back and nobody kind of travels across Antarctica in the winter in the because winter. of the, 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 the polar night. The polar night and the temperatures being too cold. Okay. And that was the big challenge of this expedition. I wanted to sail in and sail out. So we were the first ever expedition to sail in, make it right across Ant the Antarctic <laughs> continent and sail out. The excitement of, of, of crossing Antarctica uh, was not only the fact that I could ski across Antarctica, but that I was getting there on my own means. Yeah. And the route that I was going to do was a route that no man has ever walked. In Antarctica, I crossed Antarctica alone. So really? It was I didn't a, know. Yeah, it was a solo crossing of Antarctica. 
and that's the greatness of life is that when you survive the experiences you have more knowledge and you 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 have more experience to be able to take it to the next level um, but what's amazing about life is that you become older and I love becoming older because the older I become it means that the more experience I have yes and that allows me to see wider and to do more we then went I crossed New Zealand with the G, G classes because we stopped in the most southern point of New Zealand mm -hmm. um, with the Pangaea? With Pangaea, yeah, in a village called Bluff. Okay. And then um, from there, from Bluff, we then got the cars and we drove from the South Island all the way along the uh, the um, the Southern Alps. They called the mountains through the glaciers. They have all, glaciers yeah, on have, New Zealand? In New Zealand, you're beautiful. It's really stunning. Mm -hmm. Then put the cars on the boat and cross between the North and the South Island. And then um, drove through the North Island all the way to the most Northern tip of New Zealand. Okay. And that was just the most stunning countryside that you can ever get. It is, it's beautiful. And then we jumped into the, onto the boat again and sailed up to Sydney. Yeah. And from Sydney, we got the cars again and then drove through the Simpson Desert. Did you drive through the whole continent? Of, of Australia. Of Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How drove. much time did you spend on Australia? Um, we spent about three months in Australia. Mm. And then um, from Australia, we then went to to New Caledonia, those, the island group there. Yeah. And we went to Indonesia and we just went. So that was the way to, to Asia then? Yeah, that was the way to Singapore. Okay. 2018. Uh, you did Laos, you did Cambodia, you did Vietnam, and um, you and arrived in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, and then we climbed. Watch, we get to go a little bit like this. <laughs> and you climbed K2. Yeah, and then we went to K2 and climbed K2 because um, it was like always a boy who dreamed for me to, to climb K2, the most beautiful mountain in the world. Imagine. You can go and climb these places that you have only read of from a boy. Yeah. It was like a boy who dreamed for me to be able to to go to these places. But then after K2, I had to sail Pangaea up to Japan to be able to cross the, the polar ocean. I prepared the boat in Japan and then um, started the sail up all the way to the Bering Strait. Mm -hmm. to Nome, Alaska. Mm -hmm. And in Nome, Alaska, um, Jessica Ach Anika came on board the boat and our uh, assistant crew to be able to go with us into the ice. I think we reached the last yeah. station of the, of, the, of the whole expedition, right? Yeah, I think yeah, we're yeah, at, yeah. At, the, we're very, at we, the North Pole. Right? We're at the North Pole. There's there's a lot to be able to know and to understand. It's not only the physical feat of crossing Antarctica, it's or and the, the Arctic. It's to know how to navigate, because you can't just use a compass either. Uh, you north and south of the magnetic pole, so yeah. comp the compass turns in circles. You can't just read the screen of your phone because. Or, or the GPS because else. that freezes at minus 18. It's a crystal liquid, so it freezes. And these things are, are vital for your survival. The navigation works with snow drifts that's created by the big storms. Mm -hmm. And it's, then you can use the stars and the time. So the moment you have the time, 
the stars are always at a certain time at a certain position like the sun would be okay and while you're going up to the north pole you've got one star called the northern star yeah that's always above the pole and yeah. if you're lucky enough to have good weather then you'll be able to to just walk towards that star mm -hmm. but if you've got bad weather then you must be able to use the wind because the wind blow if you know the direction from where the wind's blowing then you can be then you know in which direction you're walking let's say the wind's blowing from the north you can feel the wind on your nose you have to walk into the wind what was the last time you you really feared dying no i think that crossing the north pole as well walking on very thin ice uh, having polar bears around you uh, in complete darkness uh, creates a fear and that that fear um, is the fear of making a mistake that you would eventually um, not be able to get out of that mistake or find a solution for that problem and it's not so much a fear of dying uh, because when you push your limits you have this feeling of being alive but feeling alive means that you're close to death and we never think of, of actually not making it or dying we are basically thinking of living life to the fullest and that's the flip side of, of, of the coin the flip side of the coin is that to be able to really live life to the fullest um, for me means that I'm living close to death and the moment I make a mistake is the moment that it's going to end badly for me. Thanks a lot for sharing your story today with me and for sharing all those insights into the whole expedition. It was really it's exciting listening to you. Um, I'm really thankful for that. And it was really fun driving around the G, uh, with the G-Class with you. Now you know what a G-Class is made for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what it's capable of.